up on the plate here. How's that? Good. Praise God. My sermon title today is, I wanted to add more to it, but I just, just ran out of time. It's about control. And uh, let's begin the spirit of prayer. Father, we thank you so much that, again, for allowing us to come together into your house. And Father, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and God. May our word, may my words be from you. And may our ears hear the things that you would have in the hear, Lord. Father, we want to uh, allow your blessing to come on each one of us that one day you'll come back to take us home and we will hear those words, well done, my good and faithful servant. Father, we want to be your witnesses to this community. We want to be used of you to teach others about Jesus. And Father, we thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice on the cross, and we thank you for what he's doing now in the sanctuary. May we not get in the way of his mediatorial work as he cleanses our hearts. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. of his helplessness 
his inability to steer his own vessel straight and safe into the harbor. I'm not trying to drag us down. I'm just trying to show you a reality of where we are because we are so dependent on our God that we cannot, we, we should not even want to function without our God. And this verse, uh, Romans 6.16, I, I've spoke about it so many times and, and uh, people don't like what I'm about to say, but I, the more I read verses like I, our spirit of prophecy quotes like I just read, God, said, may God give every man a realization of his helplessness, his inability to steer his own vessel straight and safe into the harbor. Romans 6.16 says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servant whom servants ye, let me, let me start, no, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or, obedi or obedience leading to righteousness. I'm going to read it one more time. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are. So whoever you yield yourself to, if you're not yielding yourself to God, then who are you yielding yourself to? The enemy. See? The enemy. So we need God in our life every second because when we don't have God in our life every second, guess who comes and takes over? The enemy. Amen. I have been taught, and I believe this more and more as I say, that we cannot choose whether we do right or wrong. That is foreign to most people's thinking. But if you read this, may God give every man a realization of his helplessness, his inability to steer his own vessel straight and safe into the harbor. You read that. What we have is a choice. And the choice we make is whether we're going to do right or wrong. And who we are, if we choose God, God is going to infill us with His Holy Spirit. Amen. But if we choose Satan, and we don't even know that we've chosen Satan when we don't choose God. Satan is so conniving, so... And, 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 and you can think to yourself that, no, I'm in control. God, I'm in control. Eve said that. Before, just before she took the, uh, the bite of the fruit. I'm in control. A sinless being. We're talking about a sinless being. You lost control because... Look at uh, Peter as, as Jesus, as he tells Jesus, you're not going to the cross. You ain't going to that cross. I'm, you're not going. And what did Jesus say to Peter? Get behind me, Satan. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Peter did not even realize that he was being used. And as we sit here today, let's not be so arrogant that we're, we are more, that we're, more, for lack of a better word, more better than Peter. <laughs> that we would not choose the right, you know, and, and the Spirit of Prophecy is really clever how she puts it. And believe me, I believe that the Spirit of Prophecy comes from Jesus Himself. Oh, by the way, did y'all know we're known as the uh, Ellen White Church? <laughs> I had no idea until recently. That we're known as the Allen White Church. But that is, that is a misnomer because Aaron, Ellen White only repeats this, what Jesus has told her. We're Jesus Christ Church. Amen. Amen. And the Spirit of Prophecy will back that up if you know where to look. You can find where Jesus tells Ellen White. She says, Ellen, these are not your words. These are my words. And I want you to put them in books so other people can read them. I paraphrase that. But she did say it. That is penned in uh, First Selected Messages, page 32. If you want to look it up for yourself. But, you know, Paul talks about in Corinthians. First Corinthians. I know I got that book in here. First Corinthians. Chapter 1.
It said, I want to start with verse uh, verse 17. It says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but for us who, who are being saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, for since in the wisdom of God, the, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For the Jews request a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks of our, his foolishness. But those, but to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men. Amen. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. Yeah, you know, I read right through what I, wanted, what I wanted to say. But Paul says that this information was given to him. He did not learn of men. Paul went on a journey himself with, with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit taught him. And, the, and Paul penned down these words from the Holy Spirit. And Paul says, these are not my words. These are the words of God. And I want to, and the reason I said that is to say this, that Mrs. White says the same thing. These are the words of God. Don't get me wrong. There is a, there's a place for the Bible and there's a place for the spirit of prophecy. But the spirit of prophecy points at the Bible. But when Jesus makes the, the statement, these are not your words, these are my words, we need to pay, we need to pay attention. And I know that some people are thinking of that. There's a, there's a spirit of prophecy quote that says, this is a, le a lesser light pointing to a greater light. It's a light. It is still a light. It's still a light. Anyway. Amen. This is what Paul, Paul stood firm for the right. He was always on the right side. It says at time at, at times the burden was was heavy, but Paul stood firm for the right. He realized that the church must never be brought under the control of human power. We have got to uh, we have always got to put our trust in our in our Savior. He is concerned about us. It is not our it is not our fight. The scriptures tell us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 that we do not battle against flesh and blood. That we battle against principalities. We have an enemy and that enemy wants us dead. Amen. If you don't think you have an enemy then, then he's got He's already got you. <laughs> anyway, we need to be aware that this enemy has been trying to destroy us since we were born. He does not want God to have a people to come back for. And that's why this church was raised. Amen. To raise a people. This church was started to raise a people to be ready for God to come back. Amen. To take them to heaven. To be alive when He comes back. Amen. And God's word does not return to him void. When he says something, he's going to take care of it. When Jesus says we're going, when he's talking to the disciples, we're going to the other side through the storm or whatever, they went to the other side. And Jesus is telling us the same thing. And we're going to come out on the other side. And this is a beautiful, uh, uh, I don't know if I want to call it beautiful. It's uh, eye-opening. And it's called Our Battle with Evil. It's in, it's, it's in the uh, bulletin today. And it starts out, the will of man is aggressive and is constantly stri striving to bend all things to its purposes. So our will 
is, is the only thing that we can give. We can give our wills to God. Amen. There is a beautiful uh, writing in the Steps to Christ. If you have a Steps to Christ book, look it up and it is about the will. The power, of, the power of God's command is limitless, and the minister who in his great need shuts himself in with the Lord may be assured that he will receive that which will be to his hearers a Savior of life unto life. That's not just for the minister that stands up here and preaches. That's for each one of us. God is going to give us as Philippians chapter 2 verse 13 says, His power to preach in these last days. Amen. And if you've looked around lately, it seems to, to me that these last days are, are, are seem to be coming faster and faster. I'm not a doomsday person saying that you know the world's going to end tomorrow, but you know, why couldn't it end tomorrow? Because when it does, we're going to go home. But we want to be ready. And, and that's the thing that's keeping Jesus from coming now. Jesus is ready to come. And I believe he's standing at the altar and he's, and he's looking down at the earth and, and he's asking, why won't these people allow themselves to be made ready? Because that's what he's asking. He, we have got to allow him to make us ready. And how do we do that? You know, people have asked that question all through time. How do we allow God to make us ready? It says, when you search for God, with what? With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. You're going to find it. Am I doing that now? I'd be lying if I said I did. But I ask God every day to create in me a clean heart. One of these days I'm going to wake up and I'm not going to know it, but I'm going to have the, the heart that I need to finish the work. We need to each be asking for that clean heart. To, re, to renew a right spirit in each one of us. You know, it's, uh, and, I, and I like, this, this comes from the scriptures, this is in the spirit of process. The race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong. The weakest saint, as well as the strongest, may wear the crown of immortal glory. All may win who through the power of divine grace, and I want you to remember, that it says through the power of divine grace. It's not through any power we have in ourselves. If you read uh, John 15, verse 5, it tells us that, he says, without me, you can do nothing. I believe it's talking about, he's talking about, I'm the vine, you are the branches, and without me you can do nothing. All may win who through the power of divine grace may, let me start it over, all may win who through divine power of divine grace bring their lives into conformity to the will of Christ. We want to allow God to bring us into that conformity. The propensities that control the natural heart must be subdued by the grace of Christ before fallen man is fitted to enter heaven and enjoy the society of pure holy angels. The propensities that control the natural heart must be subdued by the grace of Christ. As I said before, we can do nothing without Him. The will of man is aggressive and is constantly striving to bend all things to its purposes. And I read that in the, in the earlier. We need to give our wills to God. That we might know which way to go. So 
if I can fire this thing up here again. A couple more things I want to touch on. Who is stronger than Satan or God? I mean, that's, a, that's like a, a no dumb question. Now, I heard this this week from a friend of mine who lives down the street. And uh, he, he, he collects metal. And he came and picked up the metal I had for him. And, and we were talking. He's a preacher. He's probably, he's in his 80s. And he gets around okay for a guy that's in his 80s. And he was talking about this friend of his who is an atheist. And he says, uh, the, the, the man has a, uh, a bumper sticker on his car. And he says, my God, God is my co-pilot. And uh, that, that's kind of backwards. I mean, is God our co-pilot or, or is God our pilot? Yes. yes. We should. You know, they're, 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 as Ray, I believe Ray preached this last Sabbath, that there's a throne and there's a, uh, there's a crucifix in, our, in, in each one of us. And Christ is on one or the other, and you're on one. If you're on, the, if you're on the cross, Christ is on the throne of your heart. But if you're on the throne, Christ is on the cross. So we want to allow Christ to be on the throne of our hearts. Who's smarter? Satan or God? I mean, that's just a, like a no-brainer. <laughs> but this saint, this atheist that my friend was talking about, which is another fellow he was talking about, they were uh, eating crackers. And he asked him, this, he asked this atheist, he says, now, when you're just chewing up that cracker, he says, God is, when you put something in your mouth, God has created glands in your, in your mouth that when you put the cracker in your mouth, it releases fluids to digest the food to go down. And it, you think about that. You know, that, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything, God has prepared everything for us. He, it says that the, the, uh, the cross of Christ is stepped on every loaf of bread. But if you think about this, everything you see and everything you see with belongs to God. This vehicle that I, that I carry this brain around in that, that has all my information, this vehicle, this human body, is not mine. You know, that... Uh, because you hear that, that saying a lot of times on TV now, my body, you know, it's my, my body, my choice. One day, those folks are going to wake up to a rude awakening that it's not their body, it's not their choice. And I, I heard a, a good story this week, and this is kind of off subject, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to close. But uh, I thought it was interesting that... Uh, I want, I want to use some words because we have little little ears in here. So the S word. When God made Adam and Eve, there were two male and female. And this story comes from Cory Ten Boom. Yeah, Corey Ten Boom. Have y'all heard of Corey Ten Boom? It's a very famous lady, very dear lady. She died uh, a few years ago. But very. She was a. Uh, uh, caught up with the Jews and she was trying to, to save Jews. Well, she got caught and they put her in the prison with the Jews. But before that, before the, all the problems happened, and she was right, she was a little girl, she was riding on the train with her dad. And uh, she had heard this, this the S word. And then, she, and then she went, and she asked her dad, what's the S words in sin? If you put the two together, you know what I'm talking about. And the dad didn't even answer. He didn't say nothing. Very wise man. And you think about today what they're doing with young people's minds in our school. He didn't say nothing to her. Well, the train stopped. And this guy was a watchmaker. And he had a suitcase full of watch parts and everything. And he gets it down out of the rack. And he sets it down. And he tells the little girl, he says, 
Carol, you tell Scory, grab the suitcase and let's go. And she, he takes off. Well, it's so heavy, she can't pick it up. She can't carry it. And he says, this is, this is the answer to your question you asked me about the S sin. This is because I know you can't carry that suitcase. And he says, I also know that you can't carry that information. He says, that information is too heavy for you right now. When you get older, I, we will give you this information. But we have, we have, our society has changed. We're giving these young kids information. And they don't know which one they were born under, you know, Adam or Eve. I, I, I'm, I'm cutting my my explicitives or whatever you call them. We got you. We got you. But think what Satan has done to the human race. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey. We want to present ourselves to God as His servants. We want to be led by Him. And that's the only way we're going to go home one day. And that's the only way we're going to get this thing right. And I would like for the, my generation to see Jesus comes back in the clouds of glory. And He is not going to come back. His Word tells us that the, when the bride has made herself ready, Revelation 19, 7, He can come back. He can take His priestly robes off Jesus is in the sanctuary, just um, Advent message. Jesus is in the sanctuary, and our sins go up to Jesus. And he takes those sins, and he forgives us our sins. And it, all these sins are collected in the sanctuary. If you read uh, Great Controversy, chapter 23 and 24, it'll tell you where the sins are. When Jesus took the sins, he took the sins with him to heaven. And one day they will be laid on, this, on, this, on the, the great scapegoat. I shouldn't call it great. But anyway, they, the sins will be laid on him. And right now, what Jesus is doing is he's cleansing the sanctuary. At the same time, he's cleansing. This, this is the sanctuary where we want Jesus in our heart. Yes. Oh, I lost my train of thought. That's the first time today. That's not bad. <laughs> But Jesus is cleansing the sanctuary. Oh, okay. When he's done cleansing the sanctuary, that means our sins are stopped going up. When our sins stop going to the, to the sanctuary, as he cleanses us here, our sins stop going up. When our sins stop going up, he can leave that sanctuary. And he can come back. It says he goes to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we are there by faith. You have to read that in the Great Controversy all the way. We are there by faith. Once that marriage supper of the Lamb takes place, He can descend to earth. And we'll see that great cloud in the sky. And that cloud won't be no rain cloud. It'll be a cloud of angels ushering mm -hmm. Jesus down to bring us back to heaven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our closing song is number 300.